Hello everyone and welcome to our presentation. Today, Kelsey and I will be talking about our Habitat Restoration Assessment Report for the Critically Endangered Black Abalone in Orange County. When a species disappears from an environment, it can lead to shifts such as an increase in the availability of niches in that specific ecosystem. Whether the loss of that species is helpful or detrimental to the native ecosystem, predicting and preventing species decline and mass mortality is extremely difficult. The left photo here shows a cluster of black abalone in 1986 on Santa Cruz Island, while the right photo shows the exact same location two years later. The rest of this presentation will focus on what exactly happened and the preventative measures that are being done to restore the population and to prevent this from occurring again. The black abalone is a critically endangered marine gastropod that can currently be found in rocky intertidal areas and shallow subtidal areas along the west coast of North America, from Point Arena, California to Bahia Tortugas, Mexico. The map on the right shows the current range in green and the historic range in red, indicating that their native range was much larger in the past. In the intertidal zone, they are typically found deep within cracks and crevices and on the underside of large boulders. However, due to a plethora of factors, including overexploitation and disease, their population declined by over 99% in many areas, eventually leading to the closure of the Black Abalone commercial fishery in 1993. The disease that contributed to these massive declines known as withering syndrome. Withering syndrome is a pathogen that impacts abalone's ability to absorb nutrients from food. Eventually, the abalone's foot shrivels up, causing them to unintentionally dislodge themselves from the substrate, leaving them vulnerable to predation and starvation. There is evidence that the elevated temperatures from the El Nino that year helped accelerate the spread of withering syndrome, as the rate of mortality of withering syndrome has been shown to increase in water temperatures above 18 degrees Celsius. Because of this, the black abalone were listed as federally endangered in 2009 and critically endangered by the World Conservation Union's Red List of Threatened Species. Black abalone are still considered to be locally extinct throughout Southern California. Now, in order to recover the decimated populations, a recovery plan was drafted by the Black Abalone Recovery Team, a team consisting of biologists and resource managers from many agencies with expertise on abalone. The main goals of this plan were to evaluate the current populations, as well as monitor the recovery status and population changes over time. Out of the eight major recovery actions identified in the recovery plan, our project focused on two of those elements. The first action we focused on is Recovery Action 3, which emphasizes on supporting a more natural species recovery through methods like habitat restoration, translocation, captive breeding, and outplanting. Recovery Action 5 looks at protecting the general community from threats such as oil spills, erosion, and community shifts that occur in the absence of abalone by using methods such as designating critical habitat. To monitor the population of abundances throughout the range, long-term monitoring projects are being conducted by the multi-agency Rocky Intertidal Network, known as MARINE, and the Partnership for Interdisciplinary Studies of Coastal Oceans, known as PISCO. Now, Orange County has been previously surveyed. However, surveyors only found a handful of black abalone. Thus, critical habitat has not been designated. We plan to look at site geomorphology and population abundances while also looking at additional factors such as predator and food abundance and human impacts at each site. And so our research questions are one, are black abalone currently present in Orange County? Two, what areas along the Orange County coast provide suitable habitat for black abalone? And three, what areas have suitable habitat characteristics and a high potential for restoration? The goal of the study is to provide an updated status on black abalone populations in Orange County and to identify and assess habitat that could be later essential for the survival and recruitment of black abalone such that recommendations can be made for restoration practices. Our main objectives are to conduct habitat surveys at each site in order to assess the site geomorphology and status of additional biological factors. Additionally, we will be ranking all the individual factors in order to compare sites against each other. After all the sites have had their individual elements ranked, we will be able to recommend sites and areas of restoration by determining the best quality locations in Orange County for black abalone in order to facilitate the recovery of the population. We selected sites using Google Earth. Sites were selected based on appearing to have rocky outcroppings and public access points. We picked eight sites in total. We picked two sites in Corona del Mar, four sites in North Laguna, and two sites in South Laguna Beach. 
We used UC Santa Cruz's Black Abalone Habitat Protocol to assess the percentage of good, moderate, and poor habitat at each of our sites. Good habitat were areas most suitable for black abalone, moderate habitat were areas with decently suitable habitat, and poor habitat were areas that provided little to no protection for black abalone. UCSC's Black Abalone Habitat Protocol provides an effective baseline for assessing the geomorphologic quality of habitat for abalone. However, characteristics such as species interactions, food availability, and natural and anthropogenic threats are important factors to consider when determining sites for restoration. We developed a habitat assessment that considers these characteristics where each individual factor is given a positive, negative, or neutral impact score. These scores were then totaled to make recommendations. For geomorphologic features, we measured the depth and width of each crack and crevice and calculated the surface area. Depending on how much surface area was provided, we separated them into good, moderate, or poor categories. We also looked at boulder sizes and categorized them as small, moderate, or large. The surface area for boulders were then estimated to compare among sites. We selected five good quality cracks and crevices at each site to look at the percent cover of organisms occupying that space. We separated these organisms into three categories, individuals that are known to one, enhance black abalone habitat or establishment, two, degrade black abalone habitat or establishment, or three, compete for space but interspecific interactions are unknown. For predator abundance and food availability, we looked at sea stars and various kelp species at each site. We conducted time searches for sea stars to estimate predator abundance and noted the presence or absence of known kelp food species such as southern sea palm, feathered boa kelp, and giant kelp. Lastly, we assessed human impacts by recording the number of people present at each site for the duration of our surveys, the type of MP the site was located in, and the number of public access points to our site. The figures created for our results list the sites from north to south on the x-axis. Here the y-axis shows percent of habitat quality with colors green, yellow, and red as good, moderate, and poor quality habitat. Crescent Bay, Shaw's Cove 2, and Moss Cove have the highest percentage of good quality habitat denoted by the black arrows. Here we show the number of cracks and crevices on the y-axis with colors green, yellow, and red as good, moderate, and poor quality cracks and crevices. Shaw's Cove 1, 2, and 3, and Moss Cove circled in black have the highest number of good quality cracks and crevices. In addition to the amount of cracks and crevices, we also looked at the amount of underside boulder habitat. The y-axis shows the amount of boulder habitat in terms of surface area, with colors teal, pink, and gray showing small, moderate, and large boulders. For sites that have mostly poor cracks and crevices, boulders provide an adequate amount of additional habitat. Here the y-axis shows the percent cover of organisms known to enhance black abalone habitat or establishment, and the width of the bar shows the density of cracks and crevices for each percentage. Our results suggest that the amount of enhancing organisms vary within cracks and crevices, as some contain more habitat enhancers while others contain habitat degraders. Our results for predator abundance show the density of sea stars on the y-axis, with Shaw's Cove 1 having the greatest density. In terms of food availability, each site had multiple known kelp food species present, while Crescent Bay only had one. Our results for human presence show the density of people at our site on the y-axis. There are also notes above the bars denoting MPA status and public access points. MPA protection status did not dictate human presence, so if restoration were to occur in the future, additional protective measures would be needed to lessen human impacts. After scoring each factor, we totaled the number of positive, negative, and neutral impacts for each site. The sites are put in green have the least amount of negative impacts, while the sites are put in red have the least amount of positive impacts. We recommend that Shaw's Cove 2 and 3 in Moscow be prioritized for outplanning and restoration as these sites contain geomorphological features and biological factors required to support high densities of black abalone populations. These sites also possess the least amount of natural and anthropogenic threats to black abalone. When looking at the results from UCSC sampling protocol and our assessment, both methods recommend Shaw's Cove 2 and Moscow for black abalone restoration. UCSC's method also recommends Crescent Bay while our habitat assessment advises against it. The difference in recommendation is most likely due to the additional characteristics that our habitat assessment takes into account. UCSC sampling protocol provides an effective method to estimate overall habitat quality based on geomorphology, while our habitat assessment adds to theirs by including biotic and anthropogenic factors important for sustaining populations. We've provided a novel method that expands the evaluation criteria for black abalone habitat in hopes that future researchers can assess additional sites using the same method. We were only able to assess eight rocky outcrops in Orange County, which means that there are a lot more areas that need to be assessed. Future surveys can be compared with our surveys to produce a comprehensive list of recommended sites for restoration in Orange County. Our habitat assessment can then be used to compare sites across the state of California. In doing so, we can help black abalone populations recover and return them to intertidal ecosystems where they have played an iconic part in California's natural history. We'd like to thank our community partners at NOAA, Melissa Newman, and Dave Whitting for collaborating with us on this project. We'd also like to thank our project advisor, Amy, for her guidance and support. 
Lastly, we'd like to thank our Black Abalone contacts and everyone that helped us attain permits and equipment or provided funding for our project. Without you all, our project would not have been possible. Thank you.